I really, really, really want more fun in my life. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team. We've created for you free access to over 503 Life's Inside Track episodes where we share insider tips on real estate and on life, how to infuse more harmony even into your relationships and just have more fun in general. And the great news is you can get access to them from the home, from your office, or even on the go. So, you know, maybe it's I want more fun people in my Uh, life, but I do want more fun. You know, when we do our kind of annual checkup and we look at, ooh, how did this year go? What do we want to add more of? What do we want to take away? What do we want to stop? That's a whole nother episode. But normally what I desire is more fun. It is more fun. So in this episode, what you're going to learn is how can we increase our fun and it give away the tip. It's sometimes about yourself just being a more fun person. It could be that. And often it's about how do we have more fun by bringing more fun people into our lives. Mm. And it's usually people that have similar interests or think the things that we think are fun are fun. Exactly. So one of the things we enjoy, and as we're talking about this, the whole idea is start thinking about what things do you find fun? Because I know about 25, almost 30 years ago, when we started with our first coach, our first live in-person real estate coach, Joe, he said, so what do you find fun? Like, what is your rose? What is your joy? What is your delight? What makes you laugh? What lights you up? And you know how long my list was? I didn't have answers. I didn't know what fun was for me. No wonder we weren't having any fun. And we so weren't. <laughs> <laughs> and so the idea is first get clear on what is fun for you, because how can you have some fun if you don't know what it is? So as we share a few of our ideas of what is fun, they may spark some ideas of what is fun for you, or maybe you're not like me at all, and you already have a huge list of what fun is. Mm. Like I heard about this woman that wanted to find a man who was cultured, and what her definition of cultured was, was they go to the theater, and they they go to the (laughs) opera, and, you know, they, they like fine art. They go to art galleries and museums, and they just, they're cultured. And so the question that the person posed to that woman was, do you go there? And she hadn't been going there regularly. And and the answer was, well, if you're looking for people that like that, then you need to go there to find the people. Kind of simple, huh? It is simple. And so what do you like to do? Is it soccer? Is it a sports arena that you can go to a particular type of sport is it dance is it exercise and i say that half wholeheartedly half joking and half real because exercise has been a real challenge for me and we're going to do an episode in two weeks that we're going to talk about how to have fun inside of exercise even people that have leisure what we call leisure like camping or hiking or something like that They'll run into people that do the same thing if they take that activity seriously, right? Right. Or call all your friends. Send out a Facebook post. Who likes doing this? Which would be embarrassing. Why would it be embarrassing? Tell me more about that. Because sometimes putting ourselves out there, letting people know what we enjoy can feel, at least for Yetta, We have a tendency to think when people see me, they may judge me. Really? I think it might be feel embarrassing. Like if I said to on social media or even on the radio, I'm lonely. Right. I might find that kind of like a call for help or just kind of, I don't know. I'm not going to put a word to it. But if I say, hey, I'm going to the soccer game, who would, who would like to come with me? Or I'm going to the hockey game or... I like to play hockey. Who who wants to join our pickup league? That then 
doesn't feel like the same to me. It just feels like an invitation, and people can gracefully say, "No thanks, I'm, uh, that's not my that's not my gig. That's not what I like." Or they can say, "Ooh, I didn't know there was a pickup league on Monday and Friday mornings. How do I sign up?" Perfect. And so maybe it's also about how we ask the question. Because I thought that was really smart what you said, Ken. And maybe you're thinking the same thing. I know Ken just got some bonus points. He often says really smart things. So, yeah, he often says really smart things. And occasionally he says things that are really unsmart. And I am no different than that. So I think everybody who speaks, you know, the proverb says that a man is considered wise until he speaks. <laughs> and then maybe foolish. And so the idea that you thought you shared was how you ask the question may shift how you feel about asking to connect with somebody. Yes. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. I wish I would have thought of it. You did. That's oh, why I I'm did. Okay. Highlighting oh, it for you, honey. Thank you. And, you know, you can create events, mm. parties. I like a good party every once in a while. We've had some karaoke parties. We've had board game parties. We've had, you know, some of the board games are hilarious. And they create laughter. They do. Fun. It is. And even they're not necessarily board games. Gestures is one we really like. Taboo is another one we really like. They're group games. And although groups has been a little harder to do lately, we've done some things on Zoom where we can open up the conversation. And that way we can cross cultural lines and geographic lines. And that's kind of fun. So, you know, what? for us, it hasn't only been the fun in our home, although our home is set up for fun. Yeah, in the summertime, it's easier to have some groups over because you're outside, you're distancing, mm -hmm. and we uh, we bought an axe throwing kit. Now it's plastic, folks. Don't panic. <laughs> plastic <laughs> axes. The first time we said to somebody, <laughs> "I came home with an axe throwing game," <laughs> and the look on people's faces was a bit much, even for me. And yet, it's mm. plastic and it's fun, and it seems to be fun from about five, six years old to about eighty. Yeah, everybody has fun. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying if you're 88, you can't enjoy it. It's just the oldest person <laughs> we've had playing it was just turning 81. So there you go. So here's our challenge. This week, this coming week, figure out what you're going to do that's fun and invite some peeps, right? Like mm -hmm. go, go somewhere where you think it's fun. If it's dancing, find a dance club or a whatever if it's opera or, or whatever go find that right absolutely and so the whole idea is just how do we lean into finding our fun so ken said go find where to have the fun you like and i'm gonna back it up a little tiny bit and say identify for you what is fun First, we used to, when the kids were little, we had a list on the fridge of what things they enjoyed to do that were fun, that they thought were fun. Some of the things were things I said were going to be fun for them, which never really worked <laughs> very well. And yet when they said, I'm bored, then they could read the list and decide what would be fun. So maybe go back to a list. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with needing a memory jogger to tune us into what is fun because we get so caught up in what is required wired of us well at least i do and i suspect you might too yeah thanks for the privilege of coming alongside us because we're passionate about helping families thrive in their life both at home and in business moving forward with the decker team moving forward together with the decker team